it. All right guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing, I've never done like a legit car review, I don't think. I'm gonna be reviewing the, uh, not, like a, not like a snazzy review either, where it's all cinematic and stuff like that, like the actual car reviewers do. This is just gonna be a little POV review of the 2005 Nissan Altima SER. So this is like the uh, super rare model. There's not very many of them out there, especially in a six speed manual. But um, this one is an automatic, unfortunately, but it was just a flip car, so it doesn't really matter to me. Actually, it's better that it's an automatic to be a flip car, because a lot of people who are looking at Ultimas and stuff don't know what this is, but they do only really like automatic. But just a quick rundown of what's done to this one before I start reviewing it, the base of the SER and how, they, how I like it so far, and um, stuff like that. So first off, mine's got a little ding. It's not the best example of a clean one. Um, underneath it is 100% rust free, even though I live in Minnesota. It's all rust free underneath it. It's undercoated professionally. It looks super good. Um, but it does have a dent, it does have a, like a paint, a white paint scratch, which can be buffed out because there's no like crease or crack. It's just paint transfer. Um, it's missing a door handle. I found this on a lot of Nissans, but it's, you can still open it, so it doesn't bother me. But I found that on a lot of Nissans I've looked at, which is weird. And then that one, my back door handle on this side, doesn't even open but it's there. This one's broke. The one I looked at at another flip car that was just a base Ultima was broken on the other side. And then two other Ultimas I looked at, or one Maxima, one Ultima, the rear door on this side didn't open. So I don't know if door handles are their weakness, but yeah, so then missing its trim there, which whatever. The back's in good shape, minus that little scratch right there. Um, it's got some cosmetic like surface rust around the rear wheel wells, but that's it. But that stuff's easily fixable, but the inside the fenders, underneath it, is all undercoated and really good. And the rockers are solid, undercoated. Um, that's, this side's pretty good. There's a, small, there's a door ding right about there. But other than that and that little rust patch back there, just surface rust, it's fine. It is missing a front bumper. Someone stole it. They're really, really rare. Unfortunately, someone stole it. Um, from the previous owner. He had it listed with the front bumper and then um, he, as I was talking to him, I'm like, all right, I want this car. It was about $600 more with the front bumper. Um, he messaged me then in, like the next morning we were talking. He's like, hey man, I'm like, yo. He's like, someone stole my front bumper this morning. I caught him on security camera. Um, they literally stole it, so. I mean, he had his hood open like this in his driveway and stuff. He was, I don't know what he was doing, but he said, yeah, someone stole his front bumper. And uh, so I'm like, all right, well, he took 600 bucks or some of the price. I ended up paying 1100 bucks for this car cash out the door. Some guy just, he had this car sitting for a year. He had the hood up that morning. I don't know what he was doing to it, but, or the previous night and then the next morning, bumper was gone. Which really sucks because it's really rare and hard to find. You cannot find them. I found one website that has them. NissanPartsDeal.com. It's but after shipping and tax and everything, you're paying about four seventy six. So, yeah. Um, I ordered one, <laughs> so I didn't order the stock one. I ordered an aftermarket one, but it'll be good enough to flip this car. Someone, I mean, it looks good. It's the R thirty four style Duraflex front bumper, but it's good. It's better than no bumper, right? And it was about two, almost two hundred dollars cheaper than after it was shipped than the uh, stock one. So. For a flip car, yeah, if I was going to keep this car and have fun with it and build it and stuff, I would have got the stock one, but I'm not doing that. does have, uh, so now that's on the way. That should be here hopefully tomorrow. But um, So what it does have is the Nismo cold air intake, BC Racing coilovers. I don't know what brand headers, but they seem to be very nice because the welds are super good. Super, super nice welds. 
Um, it's got a brand new battery. It's tuned. Uh, it's got the wheels, the TSW Nurburgring bronze wheels. They look really, really good. Super good. It is lowered, obviously, because of the racing coilovers. But yeah, it's not the best example of a good, clean condition. But if the dent was pulled out, and when I buff this line out, and I sand down the rust, it'll be very, very clean. Because underneath it is very clean. So, yeah, and I am doing all of that, too. Because it doesn't look as good, and I want to fix it. And then it's got kind of ricey exhaust tips. But sounds pretty good. Um, something pretty cool is the neighbor. I just want to add this really quick. You guys will probably see this in my future videos. The neighbor right there with those two Mercedes, the black one and the silver one, he just bought a 2018 Camaro ZL11LE. I was over there checking it out. He was showing it to me. We're going to go for a ride, and I can make a video on it soon when he gets back from his, I think he said his Michigan trip or something. But, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. So stay tuned for some ZL11LE content. Yeah, so kind of getting into the first part, a little bit of the review, um, the looks, what I think of the looks. Um, it's a good looking car from the front. Let me close the hood. Kind of unique, the hood prop is actually in the hood. As you can see, it comes up with the hood. As you can see there, it comes up with the hood. But pretty unique. The front end looks super, super mean and aggressive. Um, too bad I don't have a bumper, but it's coming. Front end looks very good. Side profile looks really good, especially when it's lowered with coilovers and wheels. These are 18, I don't know by what, but they're 245, 45, 18 tires, and they fit perfect. So I'm guessing they're probably 18 by 8s, 18 by 9s. And they fill out the wheel wells really, really good. And then they got Bridgestone Potenza RE760 sport tires on them, so they're really nice tires too. Um, the rear end is not my favorite part of this car. It's a good looking rear end for sure, if these exhaust tips were fixed. Meaning they were hung up higher and pushed in. Which if I was going to keep the car, I'd actually get a whole new exhaust, because it's got no cats. It's got stainless, I think it's, it was stainless, a stainless steel resonator and mufflers, but it has no cats which makes it kind of raspy, but in the mufflers, I don't know what brand they are. I have no idea what brand these mufflers are. I don't know if you guys can see up in there. It's all undercoated. No idea what brand these are, but they're old, and uh, they, could be, uh, they could be chopped off. I could throw some new ones on, or I think it'd sound really good if I just put like a Magnaflow High Flow Cat to no res, no mufflers. I think that would sound better, and then I could have some nice tips. Some carbon fiber acropovic tips are the ones I was looking at, and make them nice and flush. Maybe stick out just like that so you can see the carbon fiber. And then the rear would look super good, but it's not bad. Um, I plan to sand this rust down actually later today. Completely sand it off, put some Bondo body filler there, and then uh, paint it. So it'll look a lot better. Unfortunately, this wheel right here is crashed. I don't know what they did, but drive straight, that's good enough. So overall, I think, in my opinion, it's a very good looking car. A couple things could be obviously done to it to fix some stuff like that, ding. I think this could come off. I don't like this. It needs a new trim. Has that side. If you guys notice the Maxima there, that's my daily driver, but the water pump, timing chain, and head gasket blew out. So working on that I ordered all that with the stuff for this so that'll be here and then now it won't start I don't know why I had it running yesterday checking out some stuff transline blue went and bought a new hose put that in it was a, one of the pressured hoses all good it was idling good le no leaking nothing and all of a sudden just cut off it would not turn back it tries to turn over but it doesn't so I'm thinking fuel so I'm thinking it needs a fuel pump. You can hear it turn on, but I don't know. Sounds like it's just not getting fuel. You don't smell fuel. You just don't, it's not getting fuel. But uh, back to this. So when I got it, I mean, it has tint on it, but it's really, really, really clear tint. Like this is like 75% tint. Like this is why even tint, you know? And this back one, see, you can't even tell the difference. 
maybe just a smidge. This one, there's no tint on it because it was all wrinkly and bubbly and I saw so I yanked it off and cleaned it. The roof is super faded, but again, car enthusiasts, or if I was going to keep this car, it'd be all sanded down and I'd wrap this roof. Same with the mirrors there. They were all faded, so the previous owner tried to plasti dip them. I'm not dealing with that. But I mean, the price I'm going to ask for this car, it's totally, totally a good deal. Yeah, I really, really, really wish this was a six-speed manual. It'd be so fun. But, you know, I was looking for them, and I can't find any. The closest thing I could find was it was an 05 Maxima like that um, with a brand drove for, like, 2700 bucks with the, it had the six-speed manual in it. And um, if I had to get, if I got another one of these to have fun with, I would get, like, I'd get it and then get, like, a Maxima or something. I'd try to find the Maxima six-speed. And just swap it in it because it'd just be so hard to find one of the manual in these and it'd be more a lot more expensive but um, i like how it's got the red stitching on the steering wheel it's the same wheel as my maxima has just with the red stitching accented along like the back seats have it too um if you hear any rattling it's just like my pop can and change because the exhaust is so freaking loud I'm, I'm really really surprised how quick this thing is um, it's noticeably quicker than a stock one, I'm guessing. I mean, it's full bolt-ons. I didn't even realize it was full bolt-ons. I bought it basically sight unseen. Because um, I just had one picture of the car, but I knew I knew an Ultima SER was rare. And um, I was like, all right, so I sent him a deposit to hold it. And then I drove out there, which I, the deposit was half the price of the car. So it was like 500 and I think I sent him 500 bucks. And I got there. And uh, I'm like looking around and I'm like, okay, he didn't specify in the post that it had, you know, that it had coilovers or wheels or it was modified. All the post said was runs and drives, needs front bumper. Because um, the front bumper that was originally on it was, had like a few cracks in it. So he said needs front bumper, runs and drives. Later I found out someone was stole it as I was about to come by it. But point is, it was a surprise because it had all that stuff done to it. But the drone is pretty uh, annoying, to be honest. But that's just because there's no cats. I think there was actually no res. I think it was my Lexus, sorry, that had the uh, stainless res. So no cats, no resonators, and it has just those two mufflers from, I'm guessing they're eBay mufflers. So it's essentially straight pipe. There's a nice S4. I love those cars. I definitely will own one of those, but. I mean, the, the dash is all soft touch material. It's. The doors are nice. These Nissans have like this really nice like carpet material right here. Swedish carpet, it's super nice. It's got the sunroof. This particular car, like I said, is pretty quick. It's definitely faster than my Maxima. My Maxima's quick though, but um, this one definitely feels quicker. I'm actually gonna pull off here and then we'll do a little acceleration in the manual mode and then Kind of try and not a little, not zero to sixty because that's not. Now that's about probably eighty eighty five percent throttle. I have new brakes. I have to put on it because it pulsates a little bit. So I'm just waiting on my wheel lock to come in the mail because the owner didn't give it to me. So he uh, showed me a site and I ordered one. So that should be here today or tomorrow, and then I can put the brakes on. So I won't go full throttle until then. It just kind of sketches me out because it's pretty quick. But here's a, here's full throttle, or not full throttle. Here's a little acceleration around a turn. That one was about probably 65% throttle. Um, I, I just, I don't want to go full throttle until I get all my brakes on because I have, it's rotors all around and pads. And he gave them to me with the car. They're new in the box. He just never put them on because he didn't have the key. He didn't want to order it. So. Put it back in drive. and Yeah, it's super, super nice. So I'm going to get through the guys in a little bit. Drive a little more. Let it warm up some more. And, um, oh, it takes premium fuel, by the way, too. 
Nissan recommends it, and this one's tuned on 93 octane. He says to only put 93 in it. So I do. And uh, I don't know, I, I really love this car. It's an awesome daily driver. It drives really, really good. It handles amazing with the coilovers. This thing is absolutely sweet. It's 59,490 and it's used. Oh my God. Of course it's locked. It's got 3,000 miles. It's basically brand new. It's a Laramie Mega Cab. Holy crap. How ironic. Worker got their truck from MTH. I would never, never. I worked there, I know what, what their vehicles are like. Don't go to MTH. But uh, me and my girlfriend are slowly starting to look for something new and reliable we can drive year round. Um, you know, so we have that vehicle we can drive every day. So that when I'm working on the flip car, once it's sold, we have something to drive still. Look at this worker's ZR2, that thing is sick. Perfect spec, perfect color. But look at this uh, Duramax. Should I get this thing? It's rusty, but it's probably cheap. 210K. 9,000. 9,000 for the Duramax. And it's... Is it rusty? Ooh. This is pretty rusty. Frame's rusty. But there's no rust holes in it, though. That's not... I mean... For the price and the milos, it's not terrible. Believe it or not, if you guys know anything about Duramaxes. What the hell? <laughs> oh. Is that rust or dust? It's one of the two. Okay, it's... Believe it or not. There's no rust holes, that's good. I mean, these trucks last forever, though. This thing is a freaking beast. This is only 24,000. This thing is sweet. Look at these wheels. But no, I don't want an expensive Duramax. I want something like this. The trusty ones. What year is this thing? It's a 2003, so I believe this is a L. This isn't. LB7 or an LLY? I believe this is an LLY, meaning it's the biggest factory turbo from a Duramax. That black GXP that's parked there, I'm guessing uh, she works there because that car is there every day for the past probably five years that I've been coming to St. Cloud and now living in St. Cloud. Lady, I've seen her driving it a few times. People do not know how stop signs work. Everyone's waving people across that it's not their turn. Yeah, that thing is really, really clean. I've gotten out and looked at it a couple times. It's super clean. Uh, it has no rust. It's got a Muscle Car Mafia sticker in the window. But, yeah, that thing's been there every day for a long time. Ooh, is that a Celine? It's an older Celine. I don't know how you say it. Celine? 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 That's a little acceleration, about probably 75% throttle. Not not foot all the way down. Um, it's pretty quick, even 75% throttle for what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's pretty quick. Up here and uh, talk about the car a little bit more, kind of how she drives. Kind of like, oh, right here, it's a good spot.
So, I mean, like I said, the interior, it's super comfortable. The seats hold you in. I, I can't say how it is with stock suspension and stock wheels. I can say the stock wheels, um, the stock wheels look really, really good. I really wish I had the set to kind of go with the car, um, but you can get them on eBay. Like 600 bucks will get you the whole set um, of original SER wheels. Uh, this one, the power steering rack's a little iffy, but it handles very, very precise. Um, and I have the coilovers all the way turned to soft. So um, it still handles very, very precise. You can take on ramps at like, I took one at like 60. So, and it was just flat. I mean, I, I was really, really, really shocked. But uh, this one, definitely the best handling car I've had. It's very precise. I really like to, I would really like to feel it with a good rack. You can hear it kind of <laughs> cracks and stuff, but it's in good shape in here minus the driver's seat. This one has a little bit of appeal but I'm gonna sew that right back down actually probably today or tomorrow and um, be good. And uh, it's actually got a good storage. Got the cup holders, keep your change. Got a nice deep pocket there that actually shuts, which is nice. You got the top part of your little compartment. You got the bottom, which is really deep. Got your map pockets on the doors. It's got a lot of storage for a little, a little sporty sedan. Yeah, let's get out and uh, let's get a little exhaust clip. It You'll definitely hear what I mean, how it's raspy. It kind of starts to sound ricey at the higher RPMs. To about 4,000, it sounds actually pretty, pretty good. But I think a high flow cat to no res, no mufflers would sound a lot better than it is now where it's no cats, no resonators, and it's got two ricey mufflers. I think the first option would sound a lot better. I mean, it doesn't sound crazy bad you know but it's it's a little high pitch for my liking I've always had V8s I've never had a, a car like this with an exhaust I've always had all the cars I've ever had exhaust systems on or you know straight piped or whatever were all V8s it was the Mustang GT the three valve uh, the Grand Prix GXP LS4 the Trans Am LS1 um, the Lexus GS400 was the 4 liter V8 um, those are the cars I've had exhausts on you know trucks I've never had one on something like this. It doesn't sound bad though. I will say it doesn't sound bad. It's just not the best. So uh, let's get out and do a little walk around. I'm gonna shut it off so it can cool down. I'm actually gonna get some pictures of it while I'm uh, while I'm out here. Some befores, because then I'm gonna go ahead and today I'm gonna go ahead and get this. Uh, try and get this stuff taken care of a little bit more. You know, sand this bubble off and this in here and sand this all get this all off put some bondo sand it down real nice paint it i'm gonna try my best to yeah this is just literally just paint transfer oh yeah you can see my my thumb rubs part of it away oh, yeah, i'm gonna buff that right off um try and pull this try and pull this dent out i cannot wait till this bumper comes guys it's gonna look so good i'm just about laying frame too look at that Thing is so low. It's really, really low, and it looks good. It actually, I think it could go a little bit lower in the in the rear. I think I could probably adjust the rear just a smidge. Uh, when the wheel lock comes, I might do that because I'll be doing brakes. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll try it out. The exhaust really, really pisses me off. I may go get it corrected. Like the tips, I'm, I'm gonna leave the sound. I don't wanna pay for that because I'm flipping this car. But I think I'm gonna get these tips kind of pushed in and hung up, kind of readjusted, I guess. I'm just gonna get a, like a black, I have a black paint pen. I'm gonna color in that too, that scratch and that. But the main thing is pull that dent out, fix the rust and that white line and she'll be good to go once I get the bumper on. I'd say she's probably, she's probably be a $2,000 car. I only paid 1100, the bumper was like 328 shipped. So it's not gonna be the biggest profit on this car, but it's definitely gonna be a profit. Plus I gotta have some fun with an SCR, make some content. It's just a really, it's a really nice car for what it is. Look how close that frame is to the freaking ground. While it's exposed, I'm actually gonna undercoat and clean and undercoat that frame.
But yeah, the thing drives good, it handles great. Um, sounds pretty good, it's quick. It'll definitely upset some people in some, some digs for sure. The best spot for this car, I think, is like a high first gear roll, like around 4,000 RPMs. The thing just pulls. If you just if you ease into it, the thing just slowly pulls, and it's just it's crazy. It almost feels like it's boosted. It actually, does feel like it's boosted, and it sounds like it because the Nismo cold air intake actually like flutters. It's really cool. And um, the curb rash on this wheel and this wheel kind of irritate me, but yeah, it flutters. It sounds good. The front sits absolutely perfect. I think the rear. I'm gonna lower it about about a quarter inch maybe because I remember he did tell me the rear is not as low as it can be the front he said is close to it it could go lower but he said the rear there's still some adjustability so front just sits really really good but the rear could go down just a smidge probably probably that much the front just look at that look at that fitment it's crazy nice but yeah so um, now let's get into some things that I do not like about this car. Uh, the first thing I don't like is you can't find parts for it. That's one of the things because it's rare. Uh, it took me about four, no, four or five days to find a bumper online. So basically every day that I've had this car, I've had it for about a week now, like seven days. It took me about, f no, f probably four days to find the bumper finally. I found the Duraflex, the R34 one that I ordered originally. I found it right away, but I was looking for an original one. I didn't know there was going to be, you know, 500 bucks out, you know, after shipping. But it took me a while to find it. Finally, I found it. Nissanparts.com has them. Be prepared to spend 500 bucks after shipping and tax and stuff. I'm in Minnesota, but I mean, in general, it's about that. Any other parts? You really can't find many parts for these except for eBay. Um, a couple other sites, but... The parts are just, in general, harder to find than a normal car. A lot of the normal Ultima parts fit, but also a lot of the normal ones don't fit, like the front bumper, the rear bumper, stuff like that. Another thing I don't like is you hear everything from the road. That's one thing. It has nothing to do with the coilovers or anything like that, or the exhaust. You hear everything outside. There's very, very little ins insulation or soundproofing, I guess you could say. It's just, it's not meant for that, but I, I get it but I'd like a little bit more. My Grand Prix was pretty refined. My Mustang was super refined, believe it or not. The Trans Am was more refined than this. It's just, you hear a lot, but it is a nice car nonetheless. Um, there's not really many things I found that I don't like about it. Front wheel drive, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I wouldn't want this car to be rear wheel drive. I'd rather this car be all wheel drive, but front wheel drive is okay, I guess. Um, the back seat space is pretty the back seat space is actually so here's the here's the thing my legs have a ton of room sitting behind myself like that's a good probably probably i don't know seven eight inches but my head hits the ceiling now don't mind my uh my uh beat up looking face <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of beat myself up in my sleep, I guess. I don't know, but I'm all like jacked up, man. But yeah, so there's like, I gotta like, I have to kind of, if I'm back here, my head hits the ceiling, so I kind of gotta, gotta tilt. It's not that, not that fun. Um, but otherwise, a ton of leg room, no head room. Um, back here, there's, get your cup holders, stuff like that everything you would need but there's no vents there's no vents back here so that really sucks shut the door um, armrest good but there's no vents that's one thing I really really hate because it gets hot back here my girlfriend rides back here my baby girl rides back here my dog rides back here and uh, they get hot you know it sucks so you got to wait for it to cool down enough from the front which sucks so um, the head just the uh, but I mean, it go. It's a good look on the car, so I mean, I don't mind my head being um, touching the ceiling. I'm five eleven. I could slouch a little bit like this, and be good. But that's just kind of annoying. I don't know if they could have did a different design in here, but it's basically the headliner. You can feel the. It's firm, like it's not sagging or anything. It's just low. But um, that's one thing I don't like. Another thing I don't really like. So I kind of wish. I mean, it's not bad. But I really wish they would have did something a little bit more special for the spoiler on the SER. Um, 
It's just, the taillights look good. The rear end looks pretty good. I really wish the spoiler would have came up a little bit more like a duck fin or like a duck tail, whatever you call them, a duck bill spoiler. Duck tail, I'd say. I wish it would have came up a little bit more. I wish it would have had a little bit more of a ducktail spoiler, kind of like that would come up a little bit, you know. And there's really not much stuff in the aftermarket. I've been looking for spoilers and I cannot find anything besides this or the regular Ultima SE spoiler, which wouldn't look good either. I mean, this one doesn't look bad. I just, I wish you could get, I wish it would come with like a little bit more of like a raise up, like a ducktail. I just realized this, I have OCD. I need to like fix that. But yeah, so that's, I mean, there's not much about it that I don't like. It's just kind of nitpicking things, I guess. The quality is fairly good. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality of it so far. Basically what I don't like about it, it's, I mean, it's a 2005, what do you expect, right? But, uh, oh, I kind of wish, I mean, this is a SER, it's kind of a special trim. I kind of wish the passenger seat was power adjustable. It's not a big deal though, but it's not a little thing. Just some stupid stuff. Stuff like this plastic is super cheap on the gauge pillar thing. Yeah, you can you can kind of tell the tune needs a little bit of work because I mean it pops and backfires on startups and just needs some tuning. That's all. And I think this thing will be perfect. But it still runs and drives great nonetheless. I think on a special trim car like this, I think the seatbelts would have cool, looked super cool with these contrast uh, if they were red, but whatever. <laughs> you can always dye them red if you want. But let's get a little, let's get another little acceleration here. And yes, my airbag light is on. It's always on. I don't know why. But um, let's put that manual mode and I get a little acceleration. We'll probably do about, let's do about 75% throttle. throttle I mean giving her a little 2,000 rpm little launch I think I think I could get zero to 60s in this thing in the low fives once I get the brakes on and actually go full throttle and if the tune was actually adjusted right I think I think it'd be a low five zero to 60 car this VQ sounds amazing It's pretty cool because this engine is essentially the same engine out of the 350Z. Uh, it sounds really good, but yeah, it's basically the same one out of the 350Z. It could be the exact one from the 350, but I'm new to these, I don't know. But I know it's basically the same thing. Um, it's, everyone calls it the four-door Z, but it's basically what it is. It's quick. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not much else to say about it, guys. Um, I'll wrap this up when we get back home, talk a little bit more, and, uh, yeah. In the garage here, I see something on the front porch. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Made in China. I got some eBay headers for the Maxima. I want to see how they are. Oh, oh, oh there they are. Oh, you even came with the gasket and everything. I'm not going to be installing these. I'm going to be having my exhaust guy install these. Ooh. Nice, I've never gotten headers before for anything. So these are eBay ones, but they have actually really good reviews. Nice, all the bolts are just like loose. It's nice that it came with new bolts too. This was literally $80, <laughs> 80 bucks, but they had really good reviews. I read a bunch of reviews. I think I went through like 20 or 30 reviews. Um, there's the nuts and bolts. Exhaust guy will have extra ones too, or maybe he can use stronger ones of his. I was actually really excited to get these because I've never gotten headers before. They look good. They actually look pretty good, but... The welds are definitely not the best. But, I mean, eBay, right? Alright, so we got that. And then... I completely forgot what this is. But it's for me. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, guys, I'm excited. Got the proper thing here. Goes on there, and then you torque it. 
That's good. Now let's see what this is. Yes! Yes, it's the water pump, finally. For this guy. Now I'm nervous to put it on. I do have the timing chain coming. But I'm actually really nervous to do the timing chain. I've never done one. Good thing I, good thing I opened the hood. Here's my magnet. But, um, so here's the water pump. Let's do it. There's our water pump. Gears look good. It looks super easy to install. It's literally three bolts. The, only, the problem that I'm nervous about with this stuff, and there's the o-ring. The thing that I'm nervous about is just getting everything out of the way, getting the cover off. That's what I'm nervous about. So. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm nervous about. I'm nervous to open it and see if, if the timing chain's like obliterated, I'm going to be really nervous. Okay, so really quickly ending the video, the, so the brakes that the guy gave me were uh, front brand new pads. I don't know if you can see them. I guess he said the front rotors are still good. I think they're warped because it shakes a little bit. And then he did that rotor and pads, but he never did this one, I'm assuming, because he couldn't get one of the nuts off. But I just worked on it for a good half hour on that nut with a hammer and finally got it. So I got the new rotor on. These are... I think they're zinc plated. They're zinc coated. I mean, it said something coated. I forgot what it was. Then we have ceramic uh, pads. So hopefully some of the shaking goes away because the back was uneven now, and now the front, both sides have new pads. So front probably will need new rotors here in the future. I'm guessing that's why it has a little shimmy when you hit the brakes, but could have been that uneven rear too.